On breakfast this morning, a new piece of infrastructure in Nigeria's oil industry has been described as the end of oil theft in the country. How true is this? And Nigeria's Inspector General Police has summoned police chiefs across the country over national security threats. Also, the Senate yesterday met with the nation's security chiefs led by the Chief of Defense Staff. Over the security situation in the country, we'll discuss the state of the nation's security today on The Breakfast. Ezekiel and I took joins us later to provide in-depth analysis of the nation's of the day's news of headlines. You're welcome to The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bertels. What's a beautiful Thursday morning? We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. Let's uh, get into the thick of things as usual. We start off with a look at the top trending stories in Nigeria and around the world and interesting ones um, making the rounds. And of course, uh, uh, a lot of conversation being generated on the social space. I'll just flip through my screen here and we can see there's a lot of conversation going on regarding these stories. Let's, let's start this morning uh, by looking at uh, the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, LIRS. Uh, which revealed that it's set to launch a whistleblower initiative uh, on the 5th of August. That's uh, uh, tomorrow, all right, just in under 24 hours time, over 24 hours time. You can see on your screen there uh, the head of the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service. Well, this initiative is set to be a statewide project introduced to provide a platform for employees, stakeholders, and general public to report any observation, observed violation, uh, misconduct, or unethical behavior across the state uh, in a statement uh, by the head of corporate communications, that's what he said. Uh, the launch of this uh, whistleblower initiative by the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service will take place um, somewhere in Ikeja. Let's not get that information out yet because I don't want to advertise hmm, uh, the, the location. But anyway... Um, the statement quoted a public notice signed by the LIRS, LIRS executive chairman, Ayodele Subar, wherein he said that the whistleblower initiative is a public policy of the state government to encourage reporting of illegal actions or financial crimes uh, through the appropriate channel with a view to correcting the violations or non-compliance. So it's simply want people to, um, to report. You know, we've had a whistleblower initiative uh, of the federal government in the past and this one it seems like uh, it's a state initiative not far from what the federal government has but they are you know deploying technology um, to to help so you can go to the website and say oh this person stole this money or that money etc etc I think it's an, it's an interesting one coming from the legal state internal revenue uh, uh, service um, so this is what the statements the Eli Iris boss said in the statement. He says the objective of the whistleblower initiative is to inaugurate, is to guarantee rather transparency, accountability, and confid confidentiality to all taxpayers and stakeholders in general. Uh, the policy, he said, is designed to protect whistleblowers from victimization and to encourage them to freely report uh, without fear. All right, I think uh, it's, it's just a straightforward um, uh, story. You know, there's nothing much to say here. Um, uh, let's see how it plays out uh, when it's launched. And, of course, let's, let's see what this will, uh, will yield. All right, uh, you can see here saying it should help fight, fight fraud, waste and abuse. So um, I do remember that, uh, and if you recollect, uh, the federal government, when it launched its own whistleblowing initiative, had some sort of incentive, you know, for those who would be be reporting uh, those involved in theft, financial crimes, let's call it that, uh, to the government. Remember the popular Ikoyi building money? I don't know. Where, where is that money? You remember that where the money is? <laughs> where is the money? I'm asking <laughs> one of my colleagues here in the studio. That, that money was found in one of the buildings in Ikoyi, and they, they kept asking the owner of the money to come. Somebody blew the whistle, you know, it's so millions of billions of naira, uh, US dollars, 
you know, crisp green notes. And um, till date, the owner hasn't come out to claim that money. And then uh, an agency of the federal government, DSS, said it's their money. <laughs> that they're using it for investigation. You know, <laughs> now cruise the deal for this country, uh, my brother and my sister. So, so hopefully we might see something like that in Lagos State. You know, but um, so we say, oh, you know, those in government, as usual, Nigerians will point at the authorities. Those in those politicians, um, who, who are your bosses? Are you waiting for us to tell you what they've done? You know, are you waiting for us to say, oh, don't you know? These are the things that are, I mean, they're, they're long-standing allegations and rumors, let's call it that, uh, of, of the happenings in terms of the revenue generation in Lagos State. And some people who are commenting on this have said, you know what, um, if this is LIRS, they should tell us how revenue or where the money generated from A, B, C, D, E activity that goes through company A, how that, that money is shared. Maybe that's where the whistleblowing should start from. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's 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 leave that. Let's leave that. Let's leave that at that. That okay? And you can make of that what you will. Let's go on to another top trending story, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, former President Lucia Gobasanjo yesterday uh, has been speaking. You know, there was the era of uh, uh, the former President Lucia Matthew Aremu Okikiola Obasanjo. He had his time where he wrote a lot of letters. You remember. And when Jonathan was president, he used to write so many letters. Um, these days, he's not writing as much as he's making statements. I think he's had a, uh, a change of style. But um, he seems to find his voice a lot more when it's inching towards election or in the period leading to general elections. And he's found his voice again in recent time. This time, yesterday, he had, had his views on the, the cost of, um, of diesel in the country, yeah. The cost of diesel, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, Lucia Gobasanjo, His Excellency, uh, lamented, lamented the, the high cost of diesel. You know, he wasn't too happy and he lamented the high cost of diesel, saying that it's, uh, it's affecting his business. Kind of like how Tony Lumilu had to come out and rant on Twitter, you know, how the economy was not going well and the cost of fuel and diesel was also affecting businesses in the country. You know what they say, the rich also cry. Um, you're asking what, what business is Obasanjo talking about? Oh, well, if you don't know, Obasanjo is a farmer. He's, um, he's a fish farmer. You know, he has a lot of farms. Have you heard of Obasanjo Farms? Let's not go into the details of how it started. Um, but Obasanjo, who is a fish farmer, said he has been sweating because of the high cost of diesel. All right, this is a former president of Nigeria. I mean, he's, he's a rich man. <laughs> he's a rich man, all right? Yeah, he says he's sweating because of the cost of diesel. Then how will the, um, those who are not as wealthy as he is uh, cope? Um, he spoke yesterday in Abeokota, Ogun State, during the Southwest Fish Farmers Congress held at the Olusha Gombasanjo Presidential uh, Library. Uh, this is what he, he said. He noted that the rise in cost of diesel, as well as a constant uh, increase in the price of fish, fish feed, uh, would eventually run Nigerian fish farmers out of business, except they come together to agree on sustainable prices or prices that uh, could be adopted to keep them in business. So it's not just a, an issue of the cost of diesel. He's also complaining of the cost of fish feed. I mean, this issue of feed is a big problem because um, sometimes the, the things are imported, I guess, because um, uh, when the dollar goes up, you have these things also going up. Those who are uh, 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 raising chickens, the, the poultry farmers in the country, have for some years, now a few years now, complained about the increasing cost of um, uh, chicken feed. So it's inter interesting to see the former president also inform us that the fish farmers uh, also having a tough time uh, purchasing feed for uh, their, their fish, the schools of fish. So, um, I mean, uh, how are we going to cope? You know, how are we going to cope if fish farmers are finding it difficult to... I mean, the fish feed issue is a problem. I spoke to a fish farmer who is um, a member of the House of Representatives. So, this is another rich man who was complaining about uh, how much it costs him 
uh, this was last year, complaining about how much it costs him to buy f feed for the fish. And you know, these fish, they eat like, a, I don't know what to call it, like Rottweiler, you know. You have to feed them a number of times in a day, from what I observed. Um, and you have to run the generating sets to pump the water out of the, uh, the tanks and to pump water in. So these are the challenges. It's been a while since I heard from the Minister of, of Agriculture. I do not know if they are still there. You know, if I were to ask you what's the name of the Minister of Agriculture, would you be able to tell me you know, immediately? Uh, I remember when Akiumia Adeshina, who is now the, uh, uh, the president of the African Development Bank, the AFDB, was in the federal government, the cabinet, and he was minister. I'm sure if I asked you who occupied the role he held, you would easily and quickly say, oh, the man who wears the bow tie, Akumi Adeshina. Well, these days, uh, we do not hear too much. I mean, of course, we heard of rice, rice uh, pyramids. We heard of, uh, you know, yeah, rice. We heard of rice. But uh, that rice matter, let's not go there. Let's not go there at all, because if we go there, we won't finish this program today. But um, I, I don't hear from the minister. Of, I don't. Can you do, you, do you know who the minister of agriculture is in this country? Any minister whose name you can't remember, if you watch the news always, then it means there's a problem. If, if I ask you for the name, chances are if I ask you for the name of the minister of, uh, of finance, you'll tell me Zainab, all right? You'll tell me Zainab, amen. But if I ask you for the name of the Minister of uh, Justice, you tell me um, the name of the Minister of Justice. But uh, Minister of Agriculture, I don't know if you can tell me. <laughs> you know, this is not a scientific way of, 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 of really determining if they are doing their job or not. But it's just a, a psychological thing. All right? Uh, anyway, so Obasanjo said that uh, with the current price of diesel at 800 naira per litre, uh, production of a kilogram, one kg of fish is... 1,400 naira. Uh, he says, in order to make very marginal profit, the farmers can't sell for less than 1,5. You know, says anything less than 1,5 is outright loss for them. Imagine the farmers now making only 100 naira, which does not amount to a... You can, can you even buy a gig of bread with 100 naira? These days, you can't. You know, would they want to make just 100 naira from one kg of fish? Um, I don't know. So these are the issues. And um, what are the... What's the government doing to cushion the shock of, you know, the price of the diesel or cost of diesel on the agricultural sector, on those who are running poultry farms and those who are running fish farms. You know, just as we're talking about government intervention to help the aviation industry, just as we're talking about government intervention to make sure that road transportation is smooth, is it in infrastructure, is it in ensuring security and safety on the roads, um, all these things are important for government to look at. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like much is happening. Uh, well, we pray for the best. Uh, we hope that um, something will be done in the not-too-distant future to help fish farmers, the likes of um, uh, Olusheko Basanjo, who is uh, the former president of Nigeria. All right, let's go on to some other stories. This time, the, uh, the gentleman who was... Uh, arrested, you know, when he went to defend his client in court uh, and detained and sentenced to one month in prison uh, by the judge in that matter this time, the chief justice, uh, the chief judge of Akwaibom State, the yeah, chief justice of Akwaibom State, uh, uh, Milo Diramo, uh Justice um, Ekaito Boat, happens to be or happened to be sitting on a matter uh, that uh, involved the governor of Akwaibom State uh, who, are, who appointed him. I'm not saying that is, uh, that's not to say that's a conflict of interest. But um, Inibe Fiong is the name of the lawyer. He's a human rights lawyer, a prominent one, young man here in Lagos. Um, he went into Akwaibom State to defend Liu Ekpeyong. Liu Ekpeyong was taken to court by the governor of Akwaibom State uh, over some remarks or some things he said about the governor. And of course, um, it's a huge amount of money he's meant to pay as damages if. Uh, uh, he's found guilty. Uh, it's not been too smooth between the judge and an Ibe Fion. From the first day of this case, when the judge told uh, him that uh, he's not on, on Channels TV, uh, so he should uh, keep quiet. Now that he's in Aquabum Broadcasting Corporation, so he should um, mind how he talks and that uh, he is not the one to tell her how to do her job. She has a lot of experience, you know, in the bar, in the bench, rather, as a judge. 
Uh, the second time they had a hearing, uh, the man went to court on this case. The, this same judge threatened to throw me in jail for one month. And then the next time, the last time they went, she fulfilled her promise by throwing him to jail. Not just that, ejected the reporter of Premium Times. Uh, I think one of the few newspapers or new, few media organizations nationally followed who have been covering this story and giving us the truth as far as this is concerned. Uh, she ejected the Premium Times reporter from the court before she gave the lawyer his, um, his sentence. And uh, the, the policeman detained, you know, detained this Premium Times reporter for some hours. Uh, he was released later that day. Now, after perfecting the ejection of this reporter from the court, she proceeded to order that the policeman uh, derobe this lawyer, remove his wig and gown, and arrest him, sentence him to one month in prison. Uh, for, for what we were not told. I mean, since the reporter was not there, we weren't given the full details of, or details of what this uh, judge said in the matter. One of the things that the uh, lawyer had raised, the points he raised, was that um, there was an application before this recent uh, 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 trial date. There was an application for the, the, the chief judge of Okwabom State and the trial judge, uh, my lord, the Honorable Justice uh, Ikaito, but to recuse herself from this case. And uh, she had not responded to that application, but she re resumed uh, as the judge on the matter in court, thereby giving an indication that she refused to recuse herself on this case. Now, when applications for, rec for recusal are made, these applications go to the desk of guess who? The chief judge of the state, all right? The chief judge of the state. Even for, in terms of uh, assignment of case files of cases to different judges of the Aquabum State High Court, it is this same woman, the chief judge of Aquabum State, the Kaito, but who does the assignment, uh, from what I, I, I gather, is the practice in the judiciary. And um, so it means that she assigned the case to herself, <coughs> excuse me, a case that involves a governor uh, who appointed her. Um, uh, just to put it simply, of course, it's a long procedure between the State House of Assembly, the uh, State Judicial Service, uh, the National Judicial Service Commission, and uh, the state governor, it's a whole process. But just to put it simply, the man who appointed her. So she assigned this case to herself. Uh, and then when an application for recusal was made, because the defendant uh, questioned the integrity of the judge in this matter, she refused to, to back down, did not reply them, but returned to court, invariably saying that uh, you know, she's not backing down. Um, so that's that, and uh, the judge or the, the lawyer raised some concerns about this in court. He also raised concerns about the presence of armed policemen in, in, the, in the courtroom, you know, and said he wasn't comfortable with them. I'm sure he'd be fearing that the judge was about to carry out her earlier threat to arrest him and throw him in jail for, for one month. Um, I think these things maybe annoyed the judge further, or I don't know, but I think she had already made up her mind to arrest him, because she had said it before now. So um, Inia Bia you know, informed the, the, the world through social media that he had been sentenced to one month in, in prison. We don't know what his crime was, because uh, there was no reporter that I've seen uh, was, was in court to cover this. Uh, why was the Premium Times reporter ejected from the court and arrested and detained? Just before Inia Bia Fion was um, sentenced to one month in prison. I mean, uh, the man identified himself as a reporter who had his right to be in court since it was an open case uh, for the public to attend, but the judge said no. The judge said no. The journalist should go out, and he was arrested and detained for, for hours before being released. Why? Just before you sentenced an individual, the journalist who's been writing on this story since it began what did he do? He, you know, because we're not, we're not told that he did anything. You know, was he, um, uh, 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 was he a strange face in court? Well, he identified himself. So why was he arrested? Was he detained? Okay, if you eject someone from court, you let them go. Why was he detained? Till, for hours, till the sentence was carried out and everything. Why? It's the questions that need to be answered. Because for me, apart from the fact that Nibia was sentenced to prison for one month, you know, 
without explanation that we know. The fact that this journalist from Premium Times was ejected from the court and arrested and detained for hours before being let go is something that we need to know why. We need to get some, some information as to why. Anyway, the Nigeria Bar Association has threatened, uh, finally, um, to petition the NJC, that's the National Judicial Council. I'm sure the NJC must be tired of, um, uh, you know, issues and cases involving uh, the integrity and the performance and conduct of judges. I'm sure they must be tired by now, because I, personally, as a journalist, I've lost count. Um, but the, the Nigeria Bar Association has finally uh, woken up to its responsibility uh, by threatening to petition the... National Judicial Council to sanction the Chief Judge of Aquabom State over his, her sentencing of this human rights lawyer, Anibe F. Young, uh, to one month's imprisonment. We hear that uh, the judge refused to uh, uh, release the gentleman, uh, the gentleman lawyer. So that's that. Uh, but what the NBA is saying is that uh, they are conducting an investigation on the matter and uh, they think they're citing, you know, denial of fair hearing about a judge in sending Mr. F. Young to prison. That's what they're saying. We'll keep monitoring this story. We'll keep um, uh, uh, following it, and uh, we'll see where, where, where it leads us to. Um, from what, by what the NBA is saying, maybe they are trying to insinuate that there's some sort of judicial uh, high-handedness in, in this case. Is that what the NBA is saying? We don't know. We don't know. Um, but this is what they said. Quote, this on its face, runs foul of any known practice and procedure in such cases, and is also unconstitutional. That's what we have in the country today. All right, my name is Kofi Patel. We'll be right back uh, with more on the breakfast uh, of the press. Up next, Ezekiel Yaituk uh, joins us, and we'll talk about some of these issues with him. Please stay with us. <laughs> 